Langhorn there at the tail. Missing out that time, but it's Harding. Great kick again. Thresher took it well, but is in uh, some difficulty here with Everton Davis in support. Almost an interception by Thomas. But here's Harriman on the breakout. This is thrilling play by Harlequins. Harriman to Salmon. It could be a score. Carling, a race for the line. Carling goes for the corner. He's handed off the tackle. Magnificent. Just one of those wonderful days that you well, sort of just think this is this is the best game. thing that's ever happened. Through goes Edwards. Well set back. Moon, Thompson, Carling. It was a heck of a game, and it was a, the a Bristol crowd were a, a really loud, in-your-face crowd. Don't like the sporting, uh, unsporting whistles and boos, but I don't think that'll unduly worry him. That's an obvious way to answer that. Queens hadn't won for something like 18 years against Bristol, up until that particular point. That's exactly how to do it. Will Carling was, was, was playing and Jamie Salmon, we'd put Adrian Thompson, hadn't we, at centre, who was really a centre at, at 10. Paul Ackford was in the side, Tim Bell. Timmy Bell. Tim Bell was a great character at Queen's at that time. The Harlequins backs have been outstanding simply because there's a lot of pace about them and they can cover ground extremely well. Andy Harriman, yeah, who was an international at the time. Everton Davis, Stuart Thresher at, 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 at fullback. Thresher has time for the clearance. Duggan challenges. Mick Skinner. Mick Skinner, lovely man. <laughs> <laughs> but somehow it's shot back, but it's a penalty try. The Harlequin's hand there, it looked as though well, it could, well, could have been Mickey Skinner there. Handled and our front row that day was Andy Mullins, uh, John Olver, and of course Paul Curtis. He was there as, as probably as much as anything to to look after me, <laughs> which he did very well. <laughs> Paul Curtis was one of the strongest loose heads of his era and he helped Harlequins to become the club it is today. Dad died young and Paul looked after all of us really. He was a great big brother. Yeah, he was. Yeah, well, he still is. But if it hadn't been for Dad going, um, I don't think that we'd have probably played rugby. Our stepfather, he looked at Paul and said, you need to play rugby, lad, and took him to Bognor. Um, and Paul was playing first team uh, for Bognor in the front row when he was 15 years old. Well, he was so big and strong, uh, you know, six foot two, 17, 18 stone. You know, in those days, that would that be big now. Over a period of time, um, I nibbled away at him to try and uh, get, get him to come down to Quinn's, as I'm sure you're uh, well aware of that sort of policy. Um, and, and yeah, we, uh, we, we hit it off right from the word go when he came here. Uh, Rian, his, his wife, was best buddies with my wife at college. We introduced them together, they're still together now. We were friends for many years until one fateful night in the summer ball in the West London, in, in Borough Road. And we were the last two men standing, Paul and Rian Curtis. <laughs> and everything else from there on is history. <laughs> I'd been brought up in a rugby family, so rugby was in my blood. And um, I was just delighted to be engaged and then married to somebody who had a passion for rugby like me. We'd be married 28 years next uh, week on Saturday. We came down to Wales simply because the cost of living in London got too much. And Paul being Paul got involved in the local rugby club, Pencloutha RSC. Uh, he was the coach up there for I think the year that the boys were playing rugby. And he then went to do um, coaching for that region of uh, South Wales um, and quite a lot of the, uh, this current generation of uh, Welsh internationals went through from that. I think Lee Halfpenny is one of them. He, he just had this demeanour with him that he could talk to people and because he'd done the job, uh, they accepted it, you know, it was as simple as that. And the size he is, you have to accept it when he says it, you know. 
I remember Paul turned up at my house one day on this brand new um, red uh, rock hopper, the latest mountain bike in the crew. Paul became a, a mountain bike anorak. <laughs> don't get injured. If you get injured, don't come back home here. There was a, a course turned up in Abergavenny that we hadn't ridden. One chap came down and said, oh, your mate uh, he, he's in the middle of the course, he's had an accident, you know, it looks pretty serious. I still believed that Paul would, it, it wouldn't be that bad because yeah. it was Paul. Yeah, and I thought, no, it, it, it won't be as bad as that. Paul will recover because Paul's unbreakable. And he was just lying there with cuts and bruises. And um, his first word was, sorry. Paul's condition became more and more apparent, the extent of his injury. Um, September the 17th changed our lives. She's, uh, she was at the hospital every day. Um, Driving for yeah. two hours, two hours a day to be there. They, they practically had to push her out of the place. She was living there for days on end. We didn't lose Paul Curtis. That that man survived everything thrown against him. All the illness, all the complications. Amazing, amazing strength of character. You know, I need to get home for my own good, but on the other hand, you know, just lying here because your house isn't ready is also pretty crap because you're messing it up. You've learned to use your wheelchair, you've learned the, the dexterity in your hands, you've learned to use a knife and fork again. You know, these, their skills need to be for somebody else then. Unbelievably expensive with the hoists and the equipment that you need. Uh, so the amount of money that's required um, is thought to be about £150,000. Um, that's a big ask, but um, Paul can't come out of Rookwood until that's, uh, that money's been raised and those alterations have been done. I think he needs people to, uh, to understand the generosity of spirit that that man holds within him. Um, because if, if people can do that, they will help him because he's, he's, he's the most generous, spirited man I've ever come across in my life. He comes home differently from the Paul that left here, but he comes home nevertheless. And um, we get to spend the next 20, 30 years together as uh, Mr and Mrs Curtis once again, happily married and we can all be together again. I love you. Hi, I'm David Cook and I captain the Harlequins in Middlesex. Paul played for me in both teams. He was a stalwart to the side, an absolute rock as a prop. A man who had his own job at the time would have to find his own way to work, long distances, never ever grumbled, never complained. He was a top player, a top loose head. He was then and he's still a great bloke now. He was the sort of man to beat, he was a monster of a man, wonderful human being. Now he's in a tough place and he needs your help. Unfortunately, he had a, had a tragic accident uh, and he needs our support, he needs your support, he needs my support. He needs your help to get him home to Rian, his wife and his three children. When you play rugby, you're part of a family. And if you're part of that family, you look after each other. We need to get Paul Curtis out of hospital and get him home where he belongs and we need to raise money. He needs your help and his family needs your help. Thank you. Get him back. Put your hands in your pockets, look after him. What a, a great cause. Please, everyone, get behind Paul, help bring him home and give him the, uh, the support he deserves. He needs your help to get back and have a life. So please, please, do what you can to help him. Thank you.